everybody welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you're new my name is Marilyn or some people know me Chidera and today I have a very exciting and special video planned so a few days ago my friend asked me to make her this shirt here for her birthday alongside a matching glove and I was like okay yeah I can do that and like I was thinking about it and how I would do it and I was starting to get a little discouraged because I was like I have never made a cowl neck shirt and I'm nervous about that. But then the other day I was on Pinterest and the same exact thing popped up on my Pinterest board and I was like, all right, that's a sign, just do it. As you can see, I have my sister and my brother in the back here. They're joining me for this journey to the store for now. And then when I get home, I'm gonna try and draft the pattern for the shirt and like make a mock-up or I might do that tomorrow. And we're just gonna see how it goes. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy this video, and let's go ahead and get to the store. We've got our fabric and we got our thread, and now we're gonna go find the muslin and maybe some other goodies. Hey everybody, so I'm finally back. It's a few days later now and I just want to show you everything that I got for this project before I actually dive in with any pattern making. As you can see, I did end up getting the big board just because I'm so sick and tired of using fabric scissors all the time. Like I just want to be able to lay it out and cut out my fabric. So I got this 24 by 36 fifth Fiskers board I think and it's the self feeling one and I got this one over the gray one in the end because it is recyclable so at any point that I am tired of it I can just go ahead and throw that out and then as you can see here I also got the cutter here and it just goes down like this and you can see it goes in and then it retracts back up when you press that button I got this other pattern. They had a sale on these ones. They're only $2 and it's more of like the historical one as you can see. It's the historical corset pattern but like tops like these are so in style right now and it was only $1.99 and I have so much fabric and boning left over that I can use to make a top like this and so I'm really excited to try and attempt something like that later but that's not for this project. It's just something I picked up. And then I have my blue thread here. I did go ahead and go for the darker thread because I do think that that would look much better than having the lighter thread on here. And then the elastic that I got is actually too light. So as you can see here, basically working with three different colored blues. These two are okay, but this one is just way too light for my preference, so I'm not exactly sure what to do. So I got a yard and an eighth i believe is how much i got there was i followed this original pattern that i had gotten and i thought i was going to check out with but it was 14 dollars for a pattern so i figured i really don't need that when i could just craft my own pattern so yeah i got a yard and an eighth of fabric and that's basically everything i got for this project this project started real cute just like every other project i take on you know, I was reusing my croaker bag and saving the earth to make my pattern. And I just basically drafted out the shape that I wanted the top to look like while she was wearing it. But then I realized that I don't really know how to cowl a neck. And I was definitely going to have to Google it to figure it out. So I found these instructions online. I'll be sure to link them down in the bio and you guys can follow them too. Um, so yeah, this is basically just me showing you how I did it. So if any of you guys attempt it and you need a visual, this is how it's done. It was actually fairly simple, but reading it at first was really complicated and made it seem confusing. But trust me, it's not that hard and you can just kind of follow along and see what I'm doing to really get the gist of it. So this is the new pattern. As you can see, I have now created basically a shape that's going out instead of in, and that's from all the slash and spread. And then it comes right back to the same part. This is the armpit where I marked. I marked it five inches down from the top. And this whole thing right here was originally eight inches to begin with. And then I have my three um, little marks right here for my loop and then the bottom of the shirt. So now it's time to cut out the fabric and drape this on my mannequin to see how it fits. 
Dear Lord, I could not figure out how to get this cutter working for the life of me, and I was doing it so bad that it started messing up the fabric. I tried multiple times and I couldn't figure it out, and at this point I had just given up. And I was not putting up with it anymore, so I just switched back to my scissors to save my life and my fabric. This one side is looking like right now pinned up. I do have this kind of set to a bigger bust because I was making it for myself last time. So this bust is already kind of big. So that makes me feel a little bit more confident because I know she kind of has a bigger bust for her size. And then the waist. Ooh, just look at it. Guys, like, okay, look at the bust. It's cowing. I've never done this before. I'm so freaked out right now. Like, I can't believe I just cut this piece of fabric out. Literally, all I did was cut a piece of fabric and I'm like geeked out like this. It's it's embarrassing. But anyways, and then she wanted it to be longer, which is why I have like an extra five inches on the side here as opposed to the picture where it was like cut up to like right here and it was like much shorter. So yeah, and then I already know where those um, side loops are gonna be. Good news, I was actually able to figure out how to use my little rotary cutter thing. So I just used that, which is why this one is so much neater than this one. And I'm just gonna pin this up right now. And we're gonna see how it works. All right, so I've been off work for a few hours now. It's finally time for me to stop procrastinating. It is Thursday and I wanna be done with everything by tomorrow night. So today I'm gonna really focus on just finishing this shirt and tomorrow I'll just work on the gloves. So I'm gonna be making two strips that are 33 inches long and they're each gonna be like an inch and a half wide and that way we're gonna fold them over to like be like double folded bias tape. Okay, so this is my original idea for the straps and the loops and it was just to have it so it was kind of like a double folded bias tape like I said, but by the time I had actually sewed them up, I realized that it just looked a little too bulky like based on what the original design looked like. So I decided to keep them, but just use them for the loop. So those smaller pieces, I actually never ended up using, but I just took the longer straps that I had made and cut those into three equal sections on each strap. So each was like three inches long at the end of the day. And then I just attached those to the shirt as the loops. And here I am placing them inside and pinning them, which also took a really long time, but it actually looked pretty good. I know you guys just saw me struggle for like pinning this whole thing but i just want to do a quick run over so i'm gonna start on one of the outer corners and just work my way all the way around and stop do not sew this top part because otherwise you're not gonna be able to turn the shirt inside out so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do that and i have pinned them all in places here except for the bottom but i already cut that up to make sure it was even before so let's go to the machine and get this stuff done the shirt did still need straps for the top half, so I just went ahead and took straps that were the same length but a little bit thinner and folded those in half and sewed them down. And then I put anti-fray on them to keep them from breaking apart inside and I turned those out and then I came back and opened the top, pressed it out and pinned it up just to see what it would look like with the new straps that I had made. But yeah, in all honesty, I'm gonna go trim off the inside seams a little bit so they're not as bulky. So like at the point and everything, it won't be that bulky. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this one. I don't know how to stitch this. So I think I'm gonna just like fold it inside and stitch it on top of it, on top of itself. And then come back after that and attach these straps to it at this point. I went ahead and zigzag stitched the whole thing across the top just to close it off. And I found that to be a lot more secure than doing a straight stitch and it was so much easier. And then after that, I ended up attaching the straps by hand because that part of the fabric was just a little too delicate and I wanted to do it by hand so it would be safer. I definitely suggest going down about two inches and attaching it from those two inches down because if you don't, the actual cow neck isn't gonna fold over when you wear it. It's just gonna like droop open to the front, which a lot of people make that mistake and that's why the cow necks don't ever end up working out. I've decided I'm just gonna finish working on this shirt right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the straps. I'm gonna make them. Like I was originally planning on using like that first idea I had for the, these straps, but after attaching these, 
they look so nice that I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do this again. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a 60 inch by one inch strip and then fold that half and basically do the exact same thing I did to make those straps and I'll be back when I'm going to attach that to the shirt. All right, I have a quick question and I'm looking for serious answers only. Why is it that it's always the easiest part of the project that ends up taking the most time and suddenly being the most difficult part? These gloves took a toll on my soul. I thought it was just gonna be as easy as tracing my hand and adding an inch to the edges for seam allowance and sewing it up. But no, it took me not once, not twice, but three times to get a single glove correct. And that's right, I said just one glove. I wasn't even supposed to be making a pair. It took me three times to get one glove. You know, my question is why does it always take three tries to get a charm? I don't always have the time to try something three times. And to make it better, the straps for the back of the top that were supposed to be looped in kept breaking as well. It took me three times, once again, to get those correct also. But at the end of the day, I realized I just needed to add some zigzags over the straight stitch and then it would stop snapping. So yeah, this is the rolled hem. It's gonna be about this big. The glove is still inside out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it at the like little divots of the fingers so that it's not so harsh when it's folded outside. And then I'm gonna turn it inside out. We're gonna see how this whole thing looks together. Yay, finally. Oh, this has been the worst process. Long story short, guys, I did it. I was finally able to finish this top after a few days of breaks in between what ended up being about a week and a half but i was so happy i was able to get it done and i really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and stay tuned because you're gonna see my friend wearing the top that i made for her birthday